Nigel Hughes, congratulations once again. Five home wins in a row in all competitions, nine wins out of ten games. Remarkable, remarkable result today. It is an outstanding performance uh, and result again on the back of Tuesday night uh, and the cup victory at Doncaster uh, for pretty much the same lads to put the same amount of effort in uh, that they did today. And players we did, got it wrong in the first 20 minutes, uh, picked the wrong formation, didn't think they would play a three today, but they did. So we started with that and then uh, it wasn't working, so we changed as soon as we could. Uh, and then we settled down and we looked much, much better from that point. Yeah, I mean, uh, once uh, you went behind, you didn't let the you didn't let the heads drop. And like you say, you tweaked it very quickly and, the, and it showed with Reese Oates getting that equaliser. Yep, uh, I love those sorts of goals, you know, where you put a good ball into the box. And we, we just say, if, if in doubt, smash it low and hard. It can hit defenders on the shin, the ankle. He said, <laughs> just caught him and rolled in. So uh, a brilliant goal and got us back into it. Despite the formation in the first half, uh, first 20 minutes, no excuse still for conceding the goal from the long throwing. Uh, Jordan Barry was exceptionally good today, he was on his heels. We lost two balls in our box. If you do that, you're going to concede. Thankfully, you turned it, turned it around. Steve McLaughlin, a brilliant week for him. Goal on Tuesday and a goal on Saturday as well. I think he fooled everyone with that free kick. He did. Uh, it's funny because I was standing with Andy Garn and he's, he's looking, we're right behind it. And he said, you know what? He said he could bend this round. He said, in the conditions. I said, no, he'll just chip it in for, uh, <laughs> for Ollie Hawkins. Next thing, he's changed his run up slightly uh, and very difficult for a goalkeeper in these conditions. But lovely bit of uh, just off the cuff, you know, thinking off the cuff, which is what set play should be. Yeah, you were properly gunning for a third in the uh, in the second half, particularly the first 15 minutes of it. Jordan Barrow with two huge chances. I thought for 15, 20 minutes we were very, very good indeed, uh, as well as we've played. And if we get that third goal, then I think we run out possibly more comfortably uh, winning the game. Uh, but some of the stuff we played, the one-twos around the box. Uh, and when you think we've been quite a bit centred down the left-hand side, uh, our play this season, it was lovely to see a lot more coming down the right. And Jordan Barry is linking up with Elliot Hewitt and George Lapsley, one two is in around the penalty area. And I think we've just got to do a bit more to pick somebody out uh, with those crosses and that final ball. Uh, but the football for that 15, 20 minutes was, was brilliant. Yeah, I mean, Jordan Barry, like you say, those the two chances for him, he looked like a man possessed on that right hand side in particular. He was properly going for them, wasn't he? He certainly deserved a goal today. He did. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great because he's, he's played up front. <coughs> Excuse me, and then uh, he's gone to sort of right wing back, right hand side, and he's very, very flexible like that and versatile. So, uh, but he was as good as anybody today. Yeah, despite not getting that third goal, how important was it to see the game out properly? Because, of course, 45 minutes, a very long time, plus four minutes of stoppage time. How pleased were you with the man management and the game management in the end? Yeah. I thought it's getting better each week. Uh, I think to restrict Salford to one long range shot uh, from what 25 odd yards straight into Nathan Bishop's hands. Uh, in 40, what, 49 minutes, uh, we were organised, we closed down uh, all over the pitch and made it difficult for them. Uh, and that third goal would have been lovely. As I say, the second goal would have been good against Carlisle. Sometimes you don't need it. Yeah, I think it's a very similar situation really against Carlisle on Tuesday night and again today where despite not getting the getting the, um, the extended lead, being able to keep hold of the game and restrict the opposition, that's very important, particularly in games like this. Absolutely vital. Uh, and we don't win many games by more than one goal. I think we tram me here and Scunthorpe here, but not too many. So they're going to be tight. So we have to learn uh, how to see games out. Uh, not in a negative way, because we're always still trying to break and to score. Once you lose Reese Oates, then you lose that little bit of a threat in the last 10 minutes or so. Uh, but we're, still, we're still trying for that third goal. But when you are winning with a few minutes to go, your priority is to keep it. Yeah. And how, how great was it to have Reese Oates back, of course, getting the, getting the equaliser and really running the uh, Salford defence value, particularly in the first half and very much large spells of the second. He did. I, I thought, you know, defenders are, are very wary when he's on the pitch because they know they haven't got a second. And even the goalkeeper, when he charges goalkeepers down and things like that, uh, and if it does that for 80 minutes and then has to come off, we said all along, that's absolutely fine. Uh, he was good today and it's, it's good to have him back because he, he is a threat. And uh, you're missing John Joe O'Toole and, uh, and Will Forrester today, so you had to bring in two new centre-backs. How do you think they did Hawkins and Rawson and, well, Andy Hewitt as well? I think they all did very well. Uh, I thought the back four, especially second half, uh, were excellent. Uh, I thought Ollie Hawkins was a bit unlucky to get booked early on. Uh, it was two different challenges because he booked their lad on the halfway line, but that was coming in at speed and a bit reckless. Uh, I didn't think ours was, and I didn't think their other lad was, you know, uh, leading up to our first goal. So uh, a bit unfortunate, but I thought Faz Rawson got tighter and better as the game went on uh, and really made it difficult for the big lad Elliot up front to, to get any decent play. And this, uh, and this course, this 
Yeah, this win keeps you going. Nine wins out of ten, going into a, a very difficult game at Forest Green Rovers, who uh, I think they drew five all today, would you believe, at, uh, up at Oldham. So a massive opportunity there to extend that lead and get even closer to the playoffs. Hopefully, not <laughs> about a massive opportunity when, well. you, when you're playing the league leaders as good as they are. But we go into it in good spirits, you know, nine out of ten. Uh, next, so we're looking at this sort of batch of five games, 15 points up for grabs. Uh, get as many as we can, and then by the time of the first week in January, I think we'll know a little bit, a little bit better what we're going to do in the second half of the season. Yeah, you can see the players playing with confidence as we have seen in recent games. How important is that to keep that momentum going and, and playing with confidence like that? I think it's momentum. And I think it's a desire and a determination now uh, to keep this run going as much as we can. I think it's absolutely incredible where we've come from to win nine out of ten, no draws. To actually win nine games uh, is extremely difficult to do. Uh, and a great deal of credit goes into the players for how hard they're working. You see the crowd in the last five, ten minutes again. They can sense it. They can see it as well. Um, they know they're giving absolutely everything. Yeah, again, the crowd giving you, like you say, absolutely everything and getting you over the line once again. Yeah, you know, and I told you, and Harry Charles, he comes on for the last five minutes, so he's disappointed today not playing. And you know, and then he's getting a challenge in and he's winning throw-ins and things like that. And, and really, they hardly went near our penalty area in the last five minutes or so. And that's how it should be. Yeah. And uh, very finally, a couple of players missing today. Uh, John Gerard Saul, I think he was out with illness. How, how severe is that? Uh, he just got, I think he might have this flu and stuff like that. We're not sure. We'll, we do all the tests. I think we're back to doing that next week. Um, and then see how he is towards next weekend. Yeah. And uh, no Ollie Clark either. Uh, what's the prognosis on him? Still calf. Uh, he felt it in the cup game when he came off. He tried to do a bit of training yesterday morning, uh, but it's too sore. Uh, he's got a chance, I would think, for next week. It's a difficult one when, you know, 18th's OK next week on the Saturday, but then when you've got three in a week after that, uh, we've got to be very careful because you could easily miss sort of four or five games in a two-week spell. Yeah, very busy period and very finally, uh, Danny Johnson, Kellen Gordon, a couple of those players who we've not seen for some time, how are they doing in their recovery? Uh, doing well, uh, Danny Johnson especially, he's out on the grass and, and doing some running now. Uh, I would think a couple of weeks, something like that for the Christmas period, we hope to have him back involved. Uh, Kellen not sure yet with his knee, uh, might be a little bit longer, uh, we're just monitoring that. Appreciate your time Nigel, well done today, thank you. Thank you.